If the Cubs don't get Cody Bellinger or Matt Chapman, what happens then? Let's talk you about it. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day alongside Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video, and comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section, excluding Matt Chapman, Who should the Cubs sign if they don't get Cody Bellinger? Today's Wednesday episode is presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. New customers join today. You'll get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, another day of the offseason. It's so enthralling and exciting and all the adjectives in the world. So today's topic, if the Cubs don't sign Cody Bellinger, then who are the other options in free agency? So let's make sure we're on the same page here. We are discussing in this segment free agent position players beyond Matt Chapman. Okay, we're saying Bellinger they strike out on, Chapman they strike out on. Is there anybody in free agency they can acquire? I say yes, I have one name. That's of particular interest to me. Sam, I'm curious to get your thoughts. I hope you continue to feel better and we continue to count down the days to baseball season. Feel good. Feel good. Um, You're not going to feel good after you hear my response. I see. Matt, I, um, I know a lot about baseball. I know a lot about the Cubs. You do. I respect you. I like you. You're a good friend of mine. For the first time on this show, I'd like to decline to comment. Um, I have no comment on this. Wow. I am really tired of this. Um, well, yeah, we got to start. I got. I, I know my the leads moving forward need to be a little different. No, look. <clears throat> It's not a knock on you. You're doing your job. What are the best places to go around Wrigley Field? No. <laughs> Who's the breakout player in 2024? Is Pat Hughes the greatest broadcaster of all time? Do the Chicago Cubs have the best future of any Chicago team? There. There's like five it's right not, there. it's not a dig at you. It's just Bellinger's unsigned. And the longer he goes, it seems like we continue to convince ourselves the less likely he's going to be a Cub. I don't buy it. Yeah, maybe not. I've already made my point that if I if we had to make a substitute and it's not Chapman, I'd love it to be Jordan Montgomery. <clears throat> I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to people. Watch the episode then. I I I, I, I said it beautifully in that show. Okay, well, um, we allowed, <laughs> maybe we have new people this episode. I, I'm not gonna go down the line, you know. Solaire's a giant whoop de doo. Uh, <laughs> it's just it. It has been. I'm so off- loopy right now. It has been an off. Off- well, you've done a lot of podcasting this evening. Yeah, and yesterday. Um, it's. It's enough. Right. It, 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 Scott Boris doesn't deserve the attention. Cody Bellinger. These guys don't deserve the attention. When they eventually sign in July, I will be ready to rock and roll and talk about it. Wait, did you say July? (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm waiting (laughs) to see if you're paying attention. But I plead the fifth on this question, and I'd like you to take it for me. I think there's one person that against the wall. If you really want to have impact on your 2024 club, I do think there's only one name left. On the on the offensive side, on the position side, outside of Bellinger and Chapman, and that is JD JD Martinez. Martinez. He's yeah. been an All Star five of the last six years. Right. Last year with the Dodgers, he slept. 
Oh, he's he slashed good. 271, 321, 572 with 33 long balls. 33, 103 runs batted in. Yeah. He's hit 22 plus homers eight of his 13 years. This is a true slugger. Yes. Now, of course, people would ask Matt, JD Martinez, Sam, JD Martinez, what about Christopher Morrell? Right. Where does he play? I don't know. <laughs> okay. But I know that Christopher Morrell is not a middle of the order hitter. Yeah. All my projected lineups right now have Morrell seventh or eighth. As it should be. There was even in a lineup the other day I sketched out, because this is what I do during my free periods, <laughs> where Bellinger was not re-signed and Morrell was batting eighth. <laughs> now, unless they reinvent the game, eighth is not middle of the order. Well, Meanwhile, hey, with the way analytics go these days, someone might write might, might write an essay that. that it is, dude. Yeah. Getting kind of tired of the analytics. No, me too. Me too. That's but Kyle JD Smith. Martinez would immediately bat third or fourth oh, sure. or fifth. Absolutely. Immediately. Yeah. That would be a nice pickup. Yeah. Again, he would be a DH. So, well, what happens to Morrell? Don't know. Don't care. Right. How about that? Well, <laughs> that seems a little harsh. Um, I Who would comes? say, I would say, look. I don't think this is going to happen. <laughs> um, but no, but I, I agree with what you're saying. If they it don't probably sign, be a one year deal, if they don't sign Bellinger, the logical thing to do to add pop would be to add JD, right? JD becomes your everyday DH, which means then maybe, maybe you just say, Hey, we're kind of doing the classic, our feet are in the water, not our whole body, but our feet are right. in there. So maybe we're trying to win, but let's also test out Morrell and see if he could play third base every day. Or hey, yeah. center field's open until PCA's there. Maybe, maybe he could play that a little bit. Because you know, the one thing with Morrell is he was not an everyday player last year. He doesn't have to play every day. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. I mean, he he was a matchup based guy. Um, yeah, that's good to remember. You know, for 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 the most part. So. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree with what you're saying. I just have free agency fatigue. Right. And, you know, I just, I, I ultimately think the Bellinger thing's going to work itself out. And if it doesn't, I think then the Chapman thing will. Um, and mm. if it does, if, if that doesn't, then, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be kind of weird and kind of rough. So, um, might be a long year. Yeah. And, and you know, Nike changed their uniforms, um, right. on Tuesday and, 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 and I don't really care about that either. So you yeah, know, the, my, the names the names on the back are smaller. Great the numbers. So what's what's so interesting about this off season <laughs> is that it's been a complete and utter snore fest, but yet it feels like it's gone by quickly, doesn't it? No. Oh, okay. To me, it feels like it's gone by fast, which is great because. You know, pitchers and catchers report, I believe, uh, uh, Wednesday. On, on Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, Valentine's Day. Um, and I just feel like I'm just ready to talk shop, man. I'm ready to yes. talk baseball. I'm ready to talk Bullpen about – Bullpen competition, especially. Can, can Madrigal find a way to hit five homers? Um, I, I'm ready to talk about – Craig Council and 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 right, you know I, I saw some stuff between Wilson Contreras and and Sonny Gray today that made me giggle and you know talking about how much they like each other. Just wait for till his first start; that'll change quickly. Um, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to compete. I'm ready to, right. to, to 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 get ready to go to work. Now, I said this on Monday show, and I'll say it again: I don't love this team right now. Right, it's incomplete. Let, Last seat, last year at this time, last year, I was intrigued and excited because there was a lot of unknown and there wasn't a lot of expectations. That mm -hmm. season ended up falling short of what it should have been. And now this season, I have expectations. This team needs to make the postseason. And I'm not quite sure they have the roster to do that. So I'm feeling a little yeah. bit nervous. But I also love our manager. I love some of our young pieces. And I'm ready to go to work. I'm ready to clock in. I'm ready to put my hard hat on. I'm ready to that. grab my lunch pail. And I'm, and I'm ready. 
Um, I love if, that. If Cody Bellinger wants to be a part of this thing, then come on, come on down, Cody. Right, come if on in. Wanna, if you want to continue to sit and talk numbers because you had one great season, then then you know go 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 into investment banking, man. Yeah, exactly. And I I have a few other names, but outside of all these names, I'm going to give. There's not one other person in free agency, as far as I could tell, that would impact this club. Not a one. And really, it's just J.D. Martinez. But just to be thorough, some outfield help in center would be Randall Gritchick, Michael <laughs> A. Taylor, or Adam Duvall. Okay? Great. So when the Cubs get one of those dudes, <laughs> I said this 10, 10 and a half minutes in on this episode. Third base help? How about Gio Urshela? Okay, and that's the list. <laughs> Coming up next. <laughs> Well, the we, thing is, there's just not a lot of needs. They have those positions right. filled. They just have the big hole in center until PCA is ready and some unknowns at first and third. Catcher, short, <laughs> second, left, right. <laughs> DH is solved. Right. So, you know, right, right, you right. go get Bellinger, you run this thing back. I'll tell you who I don't go want comes. on this team is going to be Tim Anderson. Oh, he's still on his couch as well. Yeah, no, and yeah. you know that's not looking good. So, right, right. <laughs> Coming up next, we take a spin around the promotional items at Wrigley <laughs> Field for this campaign, and uh, there's some some s solid um, gate giveaways. Find out what those are next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You know who's been getting buckets, Sam? Stevenson alum Jalen Brunson and the sure. Knicks having a nice year. No, uh, an all NBA year for for what 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 almost was my former teammate. Very fun. Right now, new customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet. That's one hundred and fifty bucks. If your bet wins, bet on all your favorite NBA players like Brunson and teams like the Knicks with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Right now, the favorite to win it all is the Boston Celtics at plus 260. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. I We're actually back think, here. Um, I actually think the Knicks have a chance to make the NBA Finals when they get healthy. Ah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I would. I would watch that just for Brunson. Yeah, yeah, it's good TV. Here are the gate giveaways for the Cubs in 2024. These are the main giveaways as promo items. Of course, the Cubs have all these theme nights now, college nights, other mm -hmm. special events and promos. But this is actually something that you would be handed. When you walk in these days, all right? April 1st, can I treat you to a magnet schedule? That's Monday, April 1st. Um, no. Cubs, Cubs home opener. April 6th, then, a Pat Hughes sweater. Sweater or sweatshirt? Sweater, like he wears in the booth to do the game. And that does it like have it's something It's multicolored, has a Cubs logo. It's fantastic. That it's occurring great... to me now that maybe images would have helped for the video version. That's a great giveaway. Great giveaway. Somehow, if we could get that, that'd be great. April 20th, fleece blankets. And it might be cold for one, too, in April. May 4th, how about a Cubs power bank? What? You need an outlet? Cubs power bank. Like one of those small outlets? One of those small power strips? Go, keep going. June 1st, a Christopher Burrell bobblehead where he flings off his jersey. Christopher Burrell bobblehead. June 22nd, Albert Alzali bobblehead. <laughs> the next day, June 23rd, a Ryan Sandberg statue. Oh, that would be cool to have. I got, I, we got, we got uh, Santa ones last year. I didn't know that. Yeah, I have one here. Oh, that's cool. 
I forgot. I think it was when we when we went for Nick's birthday, July fifth, a beach tote. Sorry, July sixth, a Justin Steele bobblehead. That would be nice to have. A lot of bobbleheads. And finally, August first, his first bobblehead of his career, Ian Happ. So yeah, there is a lot of bobbleheads. One, two, three, four, five. And then the Pat Hughes sweater, April 6th, very unique. That's the uh, best one. One of those, that would be really, I, I would really enjoy that. So that's the best that's one. That's the man. Cubs promo items. I do remember a few when I was a kid, Sam. Uh, I remember they tried out the Celebra Ducks. I think I've mentioned that on the show before. I got a Sosa and Alu. It was like a rubber duck with, with them. Yeah, I don't recall um, that. Um, I remember you know, 70s night. I dressed up as Austin Powers. You're kidding. When? Uh, early two thousands, something like that. Wow! My dad, my dad and I went. I dressed up like Austin Powers uh, and watched the Cubs play the Giants on seventies night. When you were a kid, was there a giveaway that made you go to the game? Probably not. No, no. What what, what brought me to the game was wins and losses. <laughs> Same thing that brings me to the game right now. Championship. That doesn't, that doesn't. So nothing's really changed. No, nothing's changed. Um. Uh, was there any food item at Wrigley? Maybe that could be an episode that ever drew you in. Well, the food, you you know, it, it's improved. It's Back really when, ebbed and flowed. Over when we had season tickets, you know, uh, my parents and myself when I was a kid, you know, it was a tough, it was a tough go of it. Connie's Pizza was like a lot of one. Connie's. Uh, yeah. the, the fries were always good. You know, they had those oh, fries okay. that never needed ketchup. Um, right. You could just eat it without ketchup. I, I remember. You know, it's crazy. It's, 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 I feel, I feel so old thinking about, you know, when we had season tickets when I was, you know, between the ages of about four or five and, and 13. But I, I usually would just get a burger, um, and fries and, and a very flat regular Pepsi. Yeah. The Pepsis were not good. <laughs> um, and then my dad would, would, would confiscate and find a way, you know, he, he would get about, you know, he would eat about four to five different meals. You know, he, he oh, ate a wow. lot. He ate a lot at those ball games. <laughs> <laughs> and my no, mom, yeah. my mom, when she, because we, we usually would go Friday. The, and when I used to go, I think they were 220 games, not 120. Yeah, they did 220 sometimes. Yeah. And so sometimes my mom would come from work. Sometimes she wouldn't. When she would come, it was usually a stop somewhere and eat before because she wasn't yeah. going to eat any of that stuff. Now, did you find the Santo bobblehead or no? Oh, is that what you want? Would, yeah, I, ha I, I actually. I thought that's you what you were doing. Oh, I'll go get it. Yeah, I, I haven't even unwrapped it. Coming up next, we're going to continue our countdown to opening day. 43 days till opening day. Stay tuned. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, Comedy and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code locked on. For twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code locked on for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Last segment here on Locked On Cubs. If we could do it, we could do a live unboxing. I could unbox it. Yeah, if you're watching and uh, you see the Ron Sano bobblehead. We're in your ears, Apple, Spotify, everywhere you get your podcast. Sam is unboxing the Ron Sano bobblehead he apparently got last year. And uh, 43 days until opening day. We are counting down the days by taking a look at Cubs players who wore that jersey number. So we're looking at jersey 43 as we see the Sano bobblehead. It's of him making a play at third base. He's about Something to throw. Something Christopher Morrell could learn how to do. That's that's right. <laughs> Jersey number 43, Sam. Oh, boy. Not many notables in Cubs history. Dennis Eckersley in 84, 85, and 86. 
Michael Wirtz, 04 to 08, and Luke Little right now. So that's the show. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Well, let's think of some uh, – let's think – I'm trying to think of some non-Cubs for Oh, non-Cubs. Troy Palomalu. Really? I think so. Um, boy, I, 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 I don't really think I, I think have Eckersley any... wore 43 with all his, all his teams. I think that's all I got for us. Well, Paul, what was it? Troy, what's his last name? Again? Troy Palomalu. Safety yeah, he was, he was a stud. Well, yeah, and apparently not a big enough stud. You don't know his name. Pittsburgh Steelers. Ronnie, Ronnie. Did we determine uh, Santos the best third baseman in Cubs history, or is it Chris? Or is I think it, it, I think, it, I think it has to be the guy that won the MVP and then won a World Championship in year two. Right. No, no. I think it has to be Brian, probably. Right. Although you know, it's so you get so technical. You know, he didn't even play a whole lot of third at times. But you know, I, I think Brian. I mean, Ron Santa was great. Aramis was great. Chris Bryant was great. Um, you know, for, and, and and Santo and Aramis were very good, much longer than Chris Bryant was. But to me, you know, those guys have the one thing that nobody else has. You know, who's the greatest yeah. first baseman? I don't know. I mean, Rizzo, they won a World Series. Right. They did it. And they were prominent players on that and team. And I love the – I listen, the 69 Cubs, you know, Ernie Banks, Hall of Famer. Billy Williams, Hall of Famer. Fergie Jenkins, Hall of Famer. Ron Santo, Hall of Famer. These guys were loaded, but they didn't get the job done. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I, I get what you're, what you're dishing out. So, you know, and, and, and I'm not, a, everyone knows, you know, those guys have aged poorly. There's no question about it, but they got the job done. We're going to be live next week on Tuesday. That's the 20th of February at the displays theater tickets, only $10 and available to really link. Novel. In this episode description, maybe we could give away that Santo bobble. Yeah. I was just going to say, I don't week. want this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a gift to a listener. Yeah. Um, we also are going to do uh, trivia, Cub stories, Q and A. Maybe there's a giveaway there as well, in addition to the Santo bobblehead. Uh, but we're going to have tons of fun. Also, a dinner and drinks menu over there in Displains. Uh, so please join us. Would love to meet you, Sam. What are you most looking forward to? The pitchers and catchers reporting on Wednesday. Um, just the, thank you so much for checking out this edition of Lockdown. The videos, the videos, you know, all the videos, just seeing people throw, go come catch, <laughs> throw and catch. This was 20 this to 30 minutes. Show, and we'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube. Got to start recording later. So I get used to it again. The like button for the algorithm. That's honestly a big adjustment. I'm half asleep. And leave a five-star review. Probably don't want to admit that on the air on I'm Apple, tired. Spotify, and everywhere. It's tired, man. You get your podcasts. We'll be back on Thursday. He's Sam Olver. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Lockdown Cubs. Not our best. Cubs.